And when I ask educators what they think deliberate practice actually looks like in the classroom, often the answer is connected to some form of worksheet with many questions on the same math operation. And the focus is on skill development. And while skill development is part of deliberate practice, it is so much more than that. Students need to practice using different tools and manipulatives, how to use models like number lines and array models, how to decode multi-step problems so they can solve them effectively. They need practice representing and communicating their thinking. Students need to practice collaborating with their peers and reflecting on their understanding, identifying what they know and what they still need to learn. It is especially important that practice comes after students have had the opportunity to engage in learning about a concept. If students don't understand what division means, for example, engaging in practice may lead to solidifying misconceptions. Or if students engage in practicing a specific pr procedure, they may focus on the steps of the procedure at the expense of understanding the concept. The High Impact Instructional Practices document states that deliberate practice is a necessary component of an effective math program, that it is best when it is deliberate, purposeful, and spaced, and that it can take many forms, such as math games, math stations, paper and pencil tasks, use of apps or technology. So being deliberate means educators don't just assign worksheets filled with questions, or have Mad Minute Mondays. Choosing opportunities for practice must be intentional and purposeful. Ask yourself, why this practice at this time for this learner? What type of practice best meets the needs of the learner? How do you differentiate practice for the different needs in the classroom? Practice also needs to be spaced over time. So students have the opportunity to revisit concepts, activate their prior learning, apply new learning. And mixing up opportunities for learning mean that students need to think critically about what skills are necessary. They don't just automatically know they are multiplying because it is the multiplication unit. And remembering how to find the mean of a set of data several weeks after learning about the concepts helps solidify the learning so that it sticks. When a student can answer six times eight equals 48 quickly, but then says they don't know seven times eight because they haven't learned that one yet, they need the opportunity to practice solving facts they don't know, not just demonstrating what they already have learned. It's also imp important to examine the still common practice of timed math tests. There is great research available about the impact of anxiety in time tests. The National Council of Teachers for Mathematics is a good source to explore for this research. But the connection is clear that putting a time constraint on any activity increases anxiety. Timed math tests are not practice. They are testing what students already know not providing them with an opportunity to practice what they don't know. And if we really are interested in assessing what our students already know, why would we do that in a way that increases anxiety and affects the outcome negatively? So as you think about deliberate practice, consider what intentional instructional steps you will take to embed deliberate practice in your classroom. How do students benefit from deliberate practice in your classroom? How does a safe learning environment impact deliberate practice in the classroom? And what supports will your students need as they develop their mathematical skills?